Hey, Shy Hearts. It is day one of our what finale coverage of two days of finale coverage. I don't know. You're mm-hmm. going to hear from us today, tomorrow, and then on Friday. So uh, we are not alone, as you guys know. This is like the fifth annual chat or something. We did the math when we recorded this week's episode. And Jeff, we think you've been here like eight times now. It's been a lot. It's- Some might say too much, right? <laughs> No, never, never, never. So uh, we are joined today for the fifth annual time. I I can't keep track of numbers, but it's our annual chat with Chicago (laughs) Med writers and producers, Jeff Dreyer and Stephen Hootstein. Hootstein or Hootstein, did I say that right? You said it right the first time. (laughs) Yay! I don't go by any of them. Any of them. Welcome back. It is so good to see you guys. It's always good to chat on our yearly basis. I can't believe the time has come to like recap another season. I I was just... It feels like forever ago. Right? Yeah. Right? So, it does. Yeah. So, um, we, you know, we've said it time and time again this year that season seven has been, in our opinions, one of the strongest seasons of Med. We've absolutely yeah. loved it. But there's there's a lot to recap because there's a lot of components right. going on. Okay. So, yeah. So, I'm, like, I'm liking the intro. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I mean, I'm very interested in hearing... Uh, uh, more. Some of the reasons behind it but yeah this is okay. good this is a great start so as you guys know we'll go chronologically through the season right so we got to start off right at the start with where we ended last season and where this season began so we got some sort of closure with natalie but none with april was that just a matter of scheduling what kind of happened there well yes predominantly uh uh I'm just saying, what was I saying? Oh, uh, she got a, you know, she had a, a show. She was a lead in a show on uh, Fox, Our mm-hmm. Kind of People, I think it was called, mm-hmm. uh, that I think is not coming back for next season. Mm-hmm. So uh, that kind of impeded any, um, you know, closure on that front. But I don't know, let's keep our fingers crossed uh, that she might have some availability and we might be able to, uh, you know, say, uh, goodbye or hello in a in a in a way that uh, you know honors uh april sexton um when natalie comes back it's really just one scene of her and will and i guess i know a lot of people and we had this discussion back when it aired like why did we get the closure between like natalie and will and maybe not natalie and other characters like crockett is it just because like will and natalie had such that long storied history that that kind of made the most sense or like why will and natalie's closure it's Manstead, you know, had to, uh, I mean, if there's, well, and, and, you know, is you can't really have an episode of someone going around saying goodbye to person after person after person. So, you yeah. know, if you had to, if you had to pick one big moment for her, it seemed like, seemed like Will was the, was the obvious choice. And they were, they were so sweet together. I, I was, I was the biggest Manstead <laughs> shipper of them all. <laughs> People tell you I hung weird. out. I hung on yeah, till the bitter end. He was. I, I I was a shipper as well, but nowhere near in comparison to Jeff, Doctor Jeff. I tried. <laughs> we tried and tried, but yeah, it was. Not I'll say, really give you a little inside. Can I give inside baseball on this one? Yeah. This bad. Yes. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> uh, to uh, Natalie was not it was not written into the uh, original script. And then, uh, you know, we felt we we shot it, and then we felt like I think collectively people felt like something was missing, and uh, so then we reached out to Tori, who was just a fabulous person all around. I think you know, no one could say anything. Uh, she's she's just great, and then she agreed to uh, to do the uh, the scenes that you saw, but they were they were written uh, pretty late in the process. So, Interesting. Uh, but it felt, you know, I don't know, it feels like it paid off. Uh, you know, that's a good choice to, we needed to have some kind of closure. Yeah, I think that episode would have felt weird without that scene. Yeah. For sure, for sure. So we saw Crockett and Will have one scene in the premiere where they bonded over Natalie leaving, but we really never saw them interact after that. And I know it had been teased that we were going to get some sort of a Will and Crockett friendship. Did you guys ever discuss maybe exploring that friendship a little bit more? Yeah, we do in the room. And, you know, this is another insight. You know, it's like, 
Uh, well, traditionally we've had surgeons, you know, we've had like either Connor uh, and now uh, Crockett. And whenever we have a surgery character, it might not, you know, it's, it's it, when you're watching the show, it's like, oh, there's medical stories, but like in our minds, right? There's like a, there's an operating room that's upstairs and it's away from the main course of action. So like, no matter how many times, even if we try to structure crosses or just scenes where they, you know, we, we've shot a lot of these scenes where, you know, you'll have Crockett be more integrated with, with characters like Will, you know, just passing through, but what tends to happen is as we, you know, get the episodes ready for production is like a lot of that stuff, if it's not driving a medical story forward, ends up on the cutting room floor. And, um, you know, that's kind of a shame for all, for the, for like the inner character stuff. Uh, you know, we, we try to do the best we can, but it's very, always very difficult to, when, once we have a character like Crockett upstairs doing transplants, he kind of ends up in, in, you know, in his, in his own little orbit uh, for, for better or for worse. But yes, I guess the, that was a long <laughs> answer to, you know, what, do we want more Will Crockett? Yes. <laughs> um, I know, so in the first episode too, we get introduced to Stevie and Dylan and we learn right, pretty much right away that Stevie and Will knew each other back in college. I'm curious, like what made you guys want to add that part of the backstory between those characters? I mean, you know, we were, we were, well, it was, it was nice to have sort of a shorthand, like a, a shortcut to get them right into the story because, uh, you know, otherwise another, you know, we, we sort of had an idea that we wanted Will and this new person to, to have a story to get, you know, to go forward together and, and to have to build all of that would, you know, take a long time and be a whole thing so that's you know just knowing each other and having this rivalry and everything seemed like such a great place to start so you could just get into it and they already knew each other and had a thing um and then you know whether we successfully <laughs> played that out as well as we could have it's you know it's 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 tough to say but uh but it, it seemed like a good idea <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And the fandom as a whole, we pretty, we latched on to Stevie pretty quickly. And so just as a character and the story with her mom and everything, what did you guys like about that story with her? Uh, you know, I, I like, it's, it's always good when you can have uh, personal stories that come into the hospital. So, you know, I think having her mom being homeless, but with medical issues, it was a very timely thing. It was, you know, a lot of that was going on, you know, right at the time, you know, in that part of the pandemic, the, a lot of, um, uh, you know, unhomed people. Uh, and, you know, the, I guess we sort of wanted to be able to shine a light a little bit on the, the medical, you know, uh, aspect of that while still being able to tell a personal story. And so this seemed like a good way and we were able to get her into the hospital several times. So, you know, is also a good way to get to know who Stevie was, you know, you don't expect a doctor to have grown up in that kind of situation. And so it gave her sort of a unique perspective. Um, so it, it uh, I don't know, made her a little different, and hopefully had her stick out a little bit from the start. Yeah, um, I know back when it was announced that Kristen would ultimately be leaving the show, I know Andy and Diane had said something about like Stevie's arc with her mom was simply just done. So I'm curious, like, was the plan for her always to be on the show just for the duration of that arc? Or did things happen behind the scenes, which led to that kind of just naturally being the end of things? Um, well, I think that arc, well, it, it's always hard to tell when you're, when you're, you know, at the beginning, you know, it's like, you know, how much, how much draw, you know, how many stories do you have uh, for, especially with new characters and integrating them into, uh, into the landscape, you know, so uh, I, that, you know, that one, that one kind of told us course. And I think there's probably a lot of saw, you know, there's a lot of burden because you're just, you know, you've got Will over there and, you know, and, and that, and Natalie leaves the show. And then, uh, you know, he's obviously got his own story, but like, there's just a kind of natural feel of, oh, do we introduce a, uh, if we introduce any female character into that space, it's going to kind of, you know, she, you know, it, it's, it's hard, it's a hard space to fill. So, 
I think from uh, from her, you know, from the from her character's standpoint with her mother, that story told its course. And then I think while we were writing it, we were open to the idea that maybe there would be some natural chemistry or a story that could, you know, launch. And and for nobody's fault, just the way things worked out, it just kind of felt like that had, uh, you know, that had run its course. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you know, she was great. And uh, uh, I'm glad that you guys responded to the storyline. Yeah, yeah. And so at the same time that Stevie left for Detroit, you guys kind of pulled a fast one on us because usually we feel like we can anticipate things pretty well. And then all of a sudden Hannah Asher comes back and we're like, whoa, like, cool. So was that purely because Stevie was leaving or was, was it always planned to insert Hannah back into the game? Uh, we we were we were surprised also. <laughs> uh, well, no, yeah, I mean it was uh, you know as we sort of got to the to the end of Stevie's arc, you know there was discussion about well, you know we you, you know, we should try to find another strong female uh, you know lead doctor that we can have in the in in the ED, and you know I think people started talking about uh, you know how much we had liked uh, Hannah. And and how her story didn't feel done, um, you know, it kind of you know sort of ended abruptly because of you know the events COVID. that were going away, and and you know it, there's there's a it seemed like there's a lot left to tell. There's the second half of that story, you know, addiction stories are you know go on forever, right? There's no you know end end to it. So seeing someone on the other side of it, and you know, again it also helped that it was someone that Will had had a relationship with because, you know, we can keep telling that story, uh, you know, wherever it takes us. And so, you know, the more we talked about it, it sort of seemed like a natural uh, thing to, to just sort of pick up. And, and, you know, I think in those last few episodes, they really, like you could, I, at least I could, I could feel it. And I, you guys tell me, but uh, I, I thought it came out pretty well. Yeah, we were just even talking about it last night when we recorded how much we've loved seeing Hannah back. And I don't think if you told us when she was coming back, if I was going to be as big of a fan of her as I am, I would have been like, no way. But like, I've really enjoyed these last couple of episodes of her. I really like Hannah a lot now. Um, and it's been it's been fun watching Will kind of struggle with how to adapt to her because he still sees the old her. Yeah. And so Will's just kind of running around being like the bumbling idiot that he is. Uh, <laughs> I'm a huge Will Stan, so I'm always on his side, but like, you know. Uh, yes, he sometimes gets a little, yeah. Yeah, we, sometimes, we yeah. love him. We still yeah. love him. So, love him. yeah. Um, so, I was going to say, ahead. speaking of Will, obviously the big storyline for him this season is the Bascom conflict. Um, and I know one thing we've talked about a lot, especially in those early episodes when the Bascom stuff was really going on, was how Will seemed to be a little less will this season and like really stepped up when Goodwin asked him to so I'm curious like was a more mature version for lack of a better word um of will part of like what you guys were hoping to get out of the storyline yeah I mean we're conscious of of the same things you guys are talking about and obviously you know you hope that your characters grow and I'm sure and certainly he's, he's had his fair share of losses and 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 lessons learned uh, you know, so, uh, you know, I, it, yes, uh, I, I did, it, did it, and, and it worked for you, right? It felt like he was uh, mm -hmm. a little more um, what, mature, is that, yeah. the, is that the right word? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it felt like the stakes were, well, not like, it also felt like the stakes were, you know, that he had to rise to a certain level, given, uh, you know, what was happening. In the hospital, so and you know, and, and it, I think you know, like having him have to live up to Goodwin's, uh, you know, and Goodwin had put you know put a lot of uh, was was out there kind of on the limb with him, so I think that helped uh, you know Will, uh, you know, realize that he wasn't just he just wasn't he couldn't just keep his own interests you know first and foremost he had. Uh, Goodwin in the hospital and, and just the, the general public's, you know, uh, needs, you know, had to keep those balanced. So uh, I think he, he stepped up. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so some of the medical cases this season, we've been, you know, they, they come and go. And we're just like, whoa, how did they find that one? One of the ones that got us like way, like just caught us way off guard was Matt Cooper and his cocaine induced heart attack. <laughs> when did you guys come up with that idea? Because that happened and we were like, oh, that was not on the bingo card. Well, as Jeff will say, I mean, he said earlier, like, you know, we're, we're a hospital, we're a medical show. Uh, you know, so once we, so, you know, every time we get out, whenever we get out into the world, uh, it's always, we're always looking for ways to like bring it back. So we knew that episode was kind of going to be like Will seeing, at, you know, more of the business side of, uh, of you know, behind the Bascom. And, you know, once you do, you know, you can only do so much <laughs> before something has to happen out there. And, the, you know, the, the cocaine habits seem to fit in with, uh, you know, Matt Cooper's you know, personality and character and where he was at. So, you know, one thing led to another and boom, figured that. I'm, I'm curious, cause I'm a big nerd about these things. Jeff, you're not the only doctor in the writer's room, are you? Uh, I am, well, everybody's a doctor now, um, they, <laughs> seven years, but uh, yes, I am. Oh, uh, okay. I was gonna say, is this like, do you guys just like throw out personal experience in there and that's how you come up with certain medical cases or do you have like a dedicated researcher? Like whose responsibility is that? That one was right from my life, my personal experience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not really. <laughs> Someone I might've known. Might have known I was gonna say, I'm like, we're, we're veering into a darker territory now. Okay. <laughs> um, that, we, well, we do, I mean, we, we have great medical uh researchers and doctors and people that help us with all this stuff and then everybody everybody on the staff also reads a lot of you know internet and and what's going on and you know a lot of times if you look real hard at the stories you can you can find a kernel of something in an article that you read six months ago <laughs> and that you know by the time it got turned into a story got twisted around so that you barely recognize it, but it, it started off there. So that's where, you know, a lot of ideas come from real life. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, uh, yeah. yeah. So Will does end up getting awarded some settlement money and decides to buy this building and become a landlord of all things. I'm curious, like, what were some of the other ideas tossed around in the room for like what Will would have potentially done with the money? I think we went to landlord really fast. <laughs> really? <went> away. <laughs> I, I mean, I think I, I can't remember who uh, who said it first, but uh, there wasn't uh, a lot. Yeah, I can't remember. There wasn't a lot of like like blue skying what he was going to do with this money. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I remember you know Andy and Diane really really took to that idea. It might have been their idea. I can't remember. And and uh, and that was that was it. That was what we were doing. And uh, you yeah, know, it worked out. <laughs> well, it's going to play a part in. The finale as well so I mean, there was a, a I'm not gonna that's right you haven't seen the finale yet yeah, 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 yeah. No spoiler <laughs> alert but there was a bit of a tail wag once, once we were talking about some stories that we you know possibly in the season him being a landlord you know helped us uh get a lot of you know hopefully get some pieces in place so does there is there is another shoe to drop do, do we at least all agree that there's no way Will knows what he's doing as a landlord? There's no way. Like, we agree with that, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just checking. Just checking. He tries, you know. Uh, yeah. So when you started planning out the Vascom storyline, did you know that the season was going to end with the trial or was that something that came later? Uh, I think we, well, uh, I mean, we suspected there would be a, trial coming down the road I, I think we we always we tried to kind of seem like it was going to end in the in the fall finale right and and make that the end of it but I think we always knew it's gonna like a phoenix rise from the flames at the end of the season and and you know there are no free lunches in Chicago Med, so you uh, you know you you blow the whistle and get some money and save some people and and you know somehow it's going to come back to get you. Uh -oh. uh, so I think. Yeah, I know we were really surprised happen. when we saw Matt Cooper pop back up in the lobby with that scene with Will and Hannah. We were like, whoa, we did not see that coming at all. That was like a 
good twist. We didn't see that coming. Um, but speaking of kind of, I guess, what's coming ahead, obviously this week's episode ends with Jessa coming back to beg Will not to testify and to like warn him to watch his back. Like, curious, like, what can you tease about what happens with Will in the trial in the finale? I, I don't know. We can't. We can't tease anything. <laughs> <laughs> it would, it is, it's... That one is, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if that makes me more nervous or <laughs> what. I well, you know, I, it, it's it's so hard. To, it's like, how do you even you know go into it without I don't know, the whole thing away? Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. So, because the, okay, the promo photos are all at some like reception or something like that, and then the the description says nothing about the trial. So, what I'm getting here is that we're going to see something that has to do with the trial in the finale. You're gonna have to see something to do with uh, with the you know. Yes, you do see something that has to do with the trial. <laughs> but remember, we are a medical show and not a legal <laughs> show. So. Okay. 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 That's okay. about all I could do. <laughs> okay, cool. So if we talk about Ethan for a little bit, if we shift over to him, until these last few episodes, we only saw him twice this season. How how difficult did that make it to craft his arc? It was a challenge. We got a break, you know, um, because of what happened last year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like we had to, like, you know, he, he uh, Brian T, uh, is, uh, got a great uh, limited series. I don't know what they're not supposed to be, starting opposite Nicole Kidman. I don't know what the status is with that. So he wanted, you know, he had that opportunity. He wanted to pursue it. And we wanted to him the same for him. Uh, and so that's kind of how, from behind the scenes, that's how we kind of worked. Uh, we're working around that at his availability. So fortunately, because he had been um, shot, injured uh, previously, we had like that as a starting point. So we knew that at least we could use his rehab and as a uh, as a way to give us some time. And then once we had a better handle on, um, you know, when he was going to be available, we started like slotting in spots and like where he could be on that arc. Um, so. Uh, I think I, I actually did, a, I, I kind of handled a couple of them uh, with just him popping back, uh, you know, for the, for his dad's, you know, when his dad died and uh, when he first came back out of, uh, you know, to do his rehab. So uh, yeah, it was, it was a challenge, but I, I don't know. I kind of liked his uh, storyline this year. Yeah. We did too. And I know we haven't really up until this point have heard much about Ethan's family um, and, or at least in a few seasons for sure. I never really knew much about his dad. So I'm curious, like what made this season the right time to get into that story? Well, I, oh, oh, I, I'm, I mean, uh, well, from a practical standpoint, it was a good time because we had, you know, we had these two different times where he kept showing up and then leaving again and you couldn't have him continued to hurt his back and have to leave the hospital. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we needed sort of a, 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 another thing to happen. And so that, you know, happened to be a great idea to, to, you know, give him a, give him a story that wasn't just uh, back related. Um, but also I think, you know, having been shot and, you know, all the stuff that came at the end of last season, um, you know, has sort of made Ethan reevaluate who he is and look at his, you know, how, uh, you know, how rule oriented he is and how, um, you know, sort of intransigent he had been over, you know, many years in, in terms of that sort of stuff. And it kind of, you know, we felt it would make him think. And, uh, and the actor, Brian T also felt that, it, you know, it would sort of um, affect who he was as a person. And so, you know, it just seemed like the right time to sort of tell a personal story that you couldn't just tell through patients and being a doctor uh, and all that about the changes that happened in Ethan from this event. And, you know, of course, your 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 father, uh, who is a military man and who, 
you know, seem to be very by the book and who, you know, either you took after or somehow were rebelling against or, you know, all those things put together, you know, it just all came together in this story of personal growth for Ethan. And so, you know, having to deal with the loss of this person right as he's going through that kind of helped us, I think, focus all the stuff that was happening inside of Ethan and put it out on the screen in, uh, in you know, what turned out to be some really nice stories. Yeah, yeah. So Ethan's BFF in the ED is Archer. And obviously, and we've, well, we're, you know, full disclosure, we've all kind of struggled to connect with him this year. We tried, but uh, Andy and Diane had told us what their favorite thing is to write for him. What about you guys? What is your favorite thing about writing for Archer? Well, uh, yeah, it's, it's a weird thing because we love, right? It's, it's an odd <laughs> thing because I mean, we love writing for Archer. And that's, you know, because of it's, you know, what we our characters and one of the reasons we love them for the general is, you know, they're very heroic and they put themselves last and, you know, they always have their, you know, even if whatever their little things are, they, they uh, they they care and they're earnest and 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 uh, and that's why we love them. But you know, it's refreshing to have a character who's not necessarily has that same POV <laughs> uh, and perspective and and can maybe be a little harsher or more cynical or or tougher. You know, um, on on both the patients he's caring for and the people. You know, more abrasive with the people around him. You know people's feelings aren't necessarily that important to him, you know? And so it, it's just a nice break to have that kind of uh, sandpaper, you know, and grit in the, in the thing to get, you know, I, 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 I hopefully it sparks, you know, some conflicts and, and interesting conversations and dynamics among the people. So yeah, we, that's what I, I personally, uh, love and I, I think Steve Weber is, you know, incredibly talented and and uh, it's hard to play, uh, you know, the guy that people like hate or hopefully love to hate or you know, you know, dislike to hate or you know, where something in that spectrum, and you know that's you know because everyone wants to be liked, but you know to 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 uh, to go there, you know that's. Um, you know, we really appreciate, uh, you know, because he is such a likable, he's a, you know, guy, you know, from his past as a person and, and from his past roles, you know, so I don't know. I, I, I don't know, Jeff, would you? No, I, I mean, look, I like that he, he says it like it is. And, uh, you know, as someone who was also a doctor and saw patients, he says a lot of the things that we were all sort of thinking, but, you know, uh, sometimes, but, you know, couldn't always say. And, um, you know, you know, I think it's refreshing. And it also, you know, from a show standpoint, it kind of, you know, allows all of our other doctors to be their sort of earnest heroic selves. Uh, you know, it, 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 you know, sort of, the, the contrast of the of the two of them, I think, also helps all of our other characters when you get to see Dr. Archer walking around saying what he's saying. Um, I don't know. I, I it, it just feels fun <laughs> to, to, to us. I know I, I know not everybody experiences it as fun, but uh, but uh, but we we love him. Is that something you guys are have, able to have even more fun with because it's Steven Weber and he's so good at what he does? You know that everything you write, he's going to say just right. So you don't have to worry about getting the words exactly 100% correct because he just does it just how you wanted him to do it. And, you know, oftentimes better. And so uh, you just let him be Steven Weber and it, it works. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, it's interesting though. I just want, like this year felt, I don't know, I, I, it felt, I felt that he was, showing a more human uh, side, particularly in his interactions with Ethan, you know, and getting back. I mean, there wasn't that kind, you know, maybe he's, I don't know. I just felt like we saw uh, a side of him that was, that was warmer and uh, more empathetic, but maybe, maybe your mileage might. might 
Yeah. And I know it, we, Gina and I talked about this. He came on the pod, Stephen came on the podcast a couple of weeks ago. And ever since he's been on the podcast, it's like definitely harder to look at Archer as like a mean person. Cause Steven is so nice. We're just like, ah, oh, but Archer, but Steven, it's just like yeah. trying to compare the two. It's like, you can't. No. And when we do, you know, I, we personally have a, have a big, like Steven with a V versus Steven with a PH thing going on. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm the archer in that <laughs> disagreement or he's the archer in this disagreement, but it's a thing. <laughs> I'm on team PH, so, you know. Um, but I know, so there's been hints to Archer's PTSD and I know like what exactly happened to him while he's overseas, although we don't really know many details. I'm curious, like, have there been conversations in the writer's room about like what specifically happened to him or is that kind of meant to be left up to viewers' interpretations? There will be, I, I, you know, I don't know if we've had specific, like some of these things we know, they kind of get filed away as like, you know, oh, here's a place where we know we're gonna, we're, where we can dig in deeper at some future date. And just that we know that there's gonna be a box of interesting stuff to play but without knowing really any of the details. And, mm -hmm. and you know, sometimes you don't want, I mean, obviously you want to do as much thinking about what those specifics are but sometimes you don't because you don't want to like you know once when, when you get to an episode where you're actually going to open that box and and see what's inside you don't you know you want to have some flexibility you know based on you know where the character's at or what what, what the story needs are at that point so i, I don't know if we've spoken specifically about, you know i do just as we start talking about next season i think we're going to be opening up his world a lot more and and have a window into his past that might include, you know, uh, examining those actual specific events and, and details. Okay, cool. Yeah, because we, we have, we've gotten hints here and there about Archer's relationship with his son, with the most recent one coming a few weeks ago that they haven't spoken in like 15 years. Are we, is that something that we'll probably learn in season eight, just why that happened? Yeah, that's, okay. that's, that's the hope, I and mean, we're literally just starting to talk about it. But there, it, it was purposefully uh, has been laid into the end of this season, you know, as a launching point. Gotcha. Um, so another one of the big storylines from the season is the Crockett, Dr. Blake, Avery love triangle thing. Um, I'm curious. We had a lot of discussion on the podcast about like a mother and daughter and how kind of just messy that whole situation was. I'm curious, like why, why a mother and daughter? Like why? <laughs> We're just going to ask it why. <laughs> I've got land, I'm, they, they're leaf blowing outside. So I'm trying to stay on mute as much as possible, which seems like a perfect time for me to throw the mic to Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember how how it all came to be. Now, I, I, I do remember that, uh, that Dominic, um, like the, uh, the, you know, uh, uh, Crockett, uh, like the idea of dating an older woman. And originally we had talked about, uh, a character coming in who is this transplant surgeon who was sort of, um, you know, started as a mentor, but, uh, ended up, not not quite being not really being a bad guy but like was sort of using Crockett a little bit and and not always practicing great medicine and you know cutting some corners and and you know tell the story of you know how is Crockett going to deal with this person uh but then you know two things happened one is it's very hard to make really bad guys on our show because they're all saving lives at the end and two we got this really great actress Sarah Rafferty, who, um, you know, was just wonderful and was very good alongside Crockett. And it just, it, it ended up turning into more of a story where, you know, they, they end up having a relationship and, and, and uh, I don't know, we just kind of kept following that story. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, um, I think uh, we started in a very kind of uh, 
soapy, maybe cynical place when we were first imagining, you know, lurid, you know, graduate, the graduate style <laughs> thing. But like Jeff said, uh, it's not really our forte. And yeah, sometimes the you know situation just, it, it very quickly pivoted once we cast, uh, you know, Sarah in the part and, you know, could see their chemistry and, 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 and the kind of cases that broke out. So it probably didn't, we probably didn't need uh, that triangle, whatever, you know, to be established that way, but, you know, um, it still has some, uh, there's still some moves. I, I don't wanna, again, I don't wanna tease uh, spoiler, the finale, but Avery is in the finale. Uh, and there's, you know, so that those relationships uh, get, you know, kind of tested. Again, not in a romantic sense. Did you guys ever consider going the Crockett and Avery route or was it always going to be Crockett and Pamela? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was like Jeff said, it was like, it just takes so many, you know, it's hard to retract your, 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 all the conversations you have because they're half, you know, especially at the beginning of the year you're literally just throwing, you know, stuff out, you know, very, in a very rapid fashion. You're trying to, you know, lay out the ideas and arcs for, you know, all these characters over the course of a season, you know, in a very, in very short order of time. And like the conversations happen very rapidly. And the thing that you might, that you pitch that might get you off the ground in episode one or two, then you actually start getting it and you're going, oh, and that, and, and then what happens in episode seven, you know, and you're just like kind of, you know, charting out a very general map that hopefully can, you know, lead you somewhere. But then when you get into it, you're just like, whoa, this doesn't, this works, this doesn't work. So, you know, like, like, like Jeff said, like the first conversation is just like love triangle, mother, daughter, blah, 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 blah. And then you actually get into the nut, nuts and bolts and you start, you know, uh, and, and things just change. And that happens with every story. Yeah. Um, when Stephen was on the, Stephen Webber was on the podcast a few weeks ago, we asked him about Archer's feelings for Dr. Blake that kind of happened at one point a little bit this season. Cause you know, there's a few times he made comments about being attracted to her and even asked her out for dinner that one time, even though she turned him down. I'm curious, like, do you guys think his feelings for her were genuine or was that more of a power move? I think they were, I think they were kind of genuine. I think he, I think he had a little thing for her. I, 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 I mean, you know, again, I, I'm an Archer fan, so I think he's got a little soft spot in there and he can't, uh, he's not very good at expressing it. And it probably took a lot for him to sort of, uh, you know, get that out loud. Um, and then you can see, you know, he, he quickly retreats when it, when it doesn't work again. And I think, I think, it was a nice little moment where you sort of got to see the guy's got a heart and like, you know, is kind of open to love. Um, so I, I, I think he did. Nice. But I so, like Stevens with a V. So, you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> it's, so because of the relationship with Dr. Blake, we've really seen Crockett throw himself into transplant as a specialty. Moving forward, are we going to continue to see more of him in that setting or is he going to kind of split his time between the ED and surgery uh probably we're talking about that now uh but given oh well, again i don't want to, yeah the, let's just say he'll split some more time the great you know we ask a lot we it's we have our, our we've had the same medical uh main medical advisor since the beginning dr andy dennis uh i don't know if you've ever you should have him on the show he's great you know he's a cop and a doctor, and he's been an invaluable resource uh, forever. And, and he holds our, you know, he, he tries his best to hold us to, you know, reality. But the one thing that we constantly uh, have forced him to bend to is we give our surgeons a lot more leeway on like the types, you know, they, 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 their specialties are, don't constrain them in, in, in real life. Uh, you know, it wouldn't be that easy for these for these guys to, you know, go from from uh, specialty to specialty. So we kind of need Crockett to uh, keep uh, his hands in all sorts of different pies. 
This is so off topic and we'll get back to Crockett in a second, but I am curious when you were talking about the medical advisor being a cop and a doctor, is that part of the inspiration for Dylan's character at all or no, that was just like something else completely different. I'm just I, I Well, I can say maybe, I remember our, our, uh, our we have a new, uh, was he, was Ryan, was this Ryan's first year on staff? Ryan Jones? Yes, yes. Ryan had been a long time uh, assistant on the show and then this was Pat first year and he was a, a staff writer this year. And I remember when we came back from hiatus, uh, I believe that was his pitch. So uh, I don't know though what like, what, you know, inspired it. Inspired it. it might, might've been. I was just curious. Yeah. Um, but I know going in, so, Obviously, you just tease that uh, Avery, we will see Avery back next week. And obviously, Dr. Blake had just ended this week's episode saying she scheduled her surgery. She's going to fix the issues with her hands. Is there anything else about that storyline you can tease or Avery's all we're getting? Well, you've seen the show for a lot. You could probably project, you know, there's going to be a surgery <laughs> and there's going to be some hard decisions to make, and, you know. So I don't want to spoil the ending, but you know, it's, there's a lot at stake. Okay. Yeah. Um, we are, our brains are such mush right now coming up with theories for the finales that like the, the prevailing theory that we just came up with, like when we recorded, you guys don't even want to know. It's just, our brains are in like panic mode. So <laughs> yeah. it's a blast. No, but you know, <laughs> it's funny. So Early on in the season, we saw Crockett agree to mentor Vanessa, and then we never really saw any of that happening. Was that more because Crockett was focused on transplants and it just didn't work out? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, we had that one, yeah, it was that, like, like you said, you know, you, at the, especially at the beginning, you're trying to like find a, a groove and like where something might have potential for moving forward. And then one of the characters might, like in Crockett's case, uh, gets, uh, you know, follows a, a, a into transplant and then, you know, and, and, and he interacts with a character like Blake and that just, you know, becomes his whole universe. Um, and uh, so hopefully there's more, you know, that we can learn between those two in the past, but it, it kind of requires, Croc like I said earlier, kind of requires Crockett himself to be, you know, in the ED more. Yeah. Um, but speaking of Vanessa, something else for her that kind of came out of nowhere, but it's maybe had some potential was that romance between her and Shintu that kind of started brewing a little bit. What made you guys want to try that just to see if it stuck or like, where did that idea come from? I'm going to pretend there's a leaf blower going here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. I think it was just having fun seeing like, you know, sometimes you just uh, you know, you've got all these, these actors and, 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 you know, you're just trying to like, you put them together and you're like, oh, we haven't seen uh, these two together. Is there, is there a spark or a thing, you know, and, and it, a lot of it's experimentation. Uh, you know, and then, and then even sometimes if the experiment's a successful experiment, story dictates might like, might prohibit you from like, going back to it or tending to that flame uh, so i don't know all, I, I i'm trying to think of like all the that was around what 13 14 or yeah something like then yeah. you know as we started kind of getting into the end of the season there were so many stories to 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 tell and you know ethan coming back and it just like everything takes up real estate and and like and we wanted to do the thing with vanessa and maggie and her biological dad and sort of leading up to that and so i you know it's also just a matter of like not having enough room to tell all the stories that we wanted to to, to tell and that was one of the sort of casualties i think yeah yeah so last week vanessa started asking maggie about her biological father and maggie's been a little hesitant about reaching out what made now the right time to explore that storyline especially since you know vanessa and maggie have just gotten to a good place themselves so why what, what made now a good time because they're finally in a good place you can't uh you, you can't, 
keep them in like a good a TV place writer. forever. Yeah, that's not <laughs> exciting. <laughs> um, but you know, I mean, Maggie and Vanessa have had such a such a great sort of season long journey of coming together. Um, you know, I guess it's sort of they become like a little family, right? And so it you know it just sort of seemed like maybe a logical next step in telling that story is like you know I, you know they're the, the well there's another member of that family out there and like you can't stop here you know it, 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 eventually that's a question that's gonna come up and be explored so it you know it seemed like you know especially because they do get along so well throwing another wrench in there um you know because maggie's gonna have feelings vanessa's gonna have feelings They've got feelings about each other. It's, you know, it seems like you can get a lot of good, a lot of good drama out of that. You guys ever like, if you, I, I wonder if you guys feel the same way about characters that we as viewers do, or if it's one of those things where since you work in that area, like you're not like able to, but do you ever feel bad for the characters where you're like, oh, poor Will, man, he was just getting into a good place. And now we've got to throw another obstacle his way. <laughs> I get that. Like you have to have obstacles in TV, otherwise it's boring, but you know, it's, it, is it a double-edged sword for you guys? Or do you just see it as like, we got to do our jobs? No, I want everybody to be happy. I like, I like everybody being happy. I like it. I, I love seeing Will be happy, but then he's got to screw it up somehow. Something's got to mm -hmm. happen. It's just it's who Will is. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, I, no, I, I, I mean, I, I watch all the episodes when they air on TV and my family, we all get into bed together and watch and watch it. And we watch as fans and, and, you know, we just love <laughs> seeing what happens to everybody. So I, we, you know, I, I, I feel it along with you guys. Yeah. I know you guys have said you're just kind of starting to talk about things for next year and Vanessa still has a long ways to go with her studies, but like, have you guys started to talk about maybe like what she might specialize in or have you had those conversations or no? Not that specifically. And most of our, most of what we've been starting to talk about is her relationship with her, uh, with her birth father. Well, Wilson, do you have any uh, you have any pitches on that <laughs> for Vanessa's specialty? For Vanessa's specialty, no, we we can't. We know how this works, though. If we pitch something, you can't use it. So yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we know how that works. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's let's quickly think of something really ridiculous. Um... <laughs> Dermatology. <laughs> yeah. Not Nobody would Jeff. be interested in that. <laughs> I've been saying seven years. Hero dermatologist. That's but that's like a whole show, honestly. That's you know, there's not enough time to tell that story. Oh my god, all of our other doctors. So, uh, if we talk about Dylan now, if we shift over to Dylan, his police past conflicting with his doctor present, it's been highlighted quite a few times this season. What about what is it about that conflict that you guys have found so interesting? Uh, <clears throat> Ooh, you know, I don't know, Jeff. You gotta... <laughs> well, I mean, we do go to that well. We go to it a lot. Um, it, and and I mean, just for the record, after you know the the season sort of broken up into little pieces where we get together and talk out a whole piece, and then get to the end of that, and then talk to the next, and sort of we get to the end of every piece and say, all right, now Dylan's just going to be a doctor and no more cop stuff. And then all of a sudden, a guy comes back from his past and well, what happened with that guy? Well, what happened to the, well, Dylan threw him in jail. <laughs> and so, you know, and then, well, all right, now here's a new thing. Dylan's gonna fall in love, but it's, you now it's with an undercover cop. And now there's a, you know, there's a, there's a, a police story. <laughs> and so it just kind of, you know, it just, it, it, it and uh, to be fair, like his whole family, you know, his sister, his dad is in that world. And, um, you know, uh, the, uh, do you guys know uh, Brian Luch, the, the PD advisor? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one thing he always says, and it was a line in the last episode because he says it so much, we just put it in. But is that like, <clears throat> even once he's retired, every time he hears those sirens go by, he wishes he was in that car with them and like it's a real thing and i you know 
it's just part of who Dylan is, you know, and, and did he get maybe one or two too many patients who had a criminal history, had a, maybe, but, you know, he, he was struggling with something throughout the season, which is like, uh, you know, as Goodwin said, I think in episode 17 is like, uh, you know, you're wearing white now, not blue. And that and that's uh, it kind of has been his struggle. Like, you know, why does he start going out with an undercover cop? Well, maybe he hasn't let go of that part of him entirely. So, you know, there's a little coincidence that, yeah, he keeps getting these cases. But there's also like the larger issue with him, which is, is he going to choose this life and put both feet into it? as opposed to having both sides of himself out there. And so, you know, I like characters who are wrestling with things and I, you know, it always provides good drama, but we did recognize on a macro well, we also had the, uh, You know, uh, it was not the inspiration for the character, but given that we're uh, still, uh, our, our production protocols have changed since, uh, you know, since the, and start of the pandemic. And, you know, one thing that we, that you, you probably noticed is, you know, no crossovers this year. Not only no crossovers, but we uh, really, you know, the, the shows have wanted to make sure that there's, you know, just the, 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 the characters don't overlap, you know, like, as, like they used to, uh, at least temporarily. So, I think we, you know, besides dealing with the character himself, the idea of bringing the cop, the PD world into the hospital, you know, in a way that we used to do uh, a little more frequently, you know, with, uh, you know, more of their characters, like allowed us to kind of keep that spirit alive without relying on, uh, you know, the, the PD and the fire casts. So they, so yeah, we probably, that was contributed at least to some of the storytelling. And, and just one, one thing I have to say very quickly is uh, in the case early in the season where Dylan was with Charles and there were the two kids, the glass child syndrome and the mm -hmm. kid that didn't have ADD, uh, you guys spent in a, a long time discussing how the kid could be injured by a Nerf bullet and, and, and you couldn't understand how that injury could be caused <laughs> by a Nerf bullet. Just for the record, the brother threw the Nerf gun at him and the gun hit him in the head. Okay. And so I want to make sure we clear that up that you didn't think that we had thought that a large head injury was caused by a Nerf bullet, both for the Nerf company say... and, for, and, and, and for my own integrity. I wanted to make sure that all Thank the you. listeners of the podcast understood that that was, that was not the intention. So. <laughs> Thank you for clearing now we, that up. Now yeah. We can move forward. Yeah, yeah, we did spend a lot of time <laughs> trying to figure that out. So, yeah. As stay, we do. Like, stay on standby next season because I think after every week we're gonna be like, Jeff, how did this how did this result in this injury? Like just can you we don't understand. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um speaking of you were kind of just you guys were talking about Dylan's past a little <clears> bit. And for being such a new character, obviously this being his first season, we certainly learned a lot about Dylan's past. Obviously, we met a bunch of his family, we met Carmen and Terrell. I'm curious, like what made you guys want to go so deep on Dylan's past, like so soon after we introduced him as a character? Um I, I don't know, I just just because he's I guess it's, it's, it's all part and parcel with like what we've just been talking about like there's because he was a cop there's there's a kind of a color a natural sense of you know color and conflict and you know significant events and people with agendas and you know there's a little bit of shorthand you know the, you know it's good guys and bad guys and uh and that he had uh you know most of our doc you know most doctors right are like you know, they, they were great students. I mean, you know, and they kind of kept their nose to the grindstone. They went to, you know, they all have a very similar uh, history of high achievement, you know, without much break. And so uh, when you find out a, a character didn't follow that path, you know, you're just going to be, and, and not only didn't follow that path, but like, oh, had a, had a, had a path that that uh, you know where he 
had to cheat people and arrest people and, you know, and have those types of uh, inherent, uh, you know, internal dramas that it just, it's just easier to, to go to. So yeah, I, yeah I, I think if he had a different backstory, you know, you wouldn't, we wouldn't be spending as much time. You know? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, at the same time, we, I like, we made a concerted effort in introducing two new characters this year to sort of give them a history that would be interesting. So it didn't look like you were just plopping them into the middle of our show. And here's another person curing more diseases, you, you, you know, that it kind of set them apart you know, in, in season seven, when you get a new character, you want to give him a little, you know, something, you know, Stevie with her mom and the home, you know, growing up that way. And, you know, something that sets him apart and says, you know, this person's different than everybody else and you're going to want to hear their story. And so, uh, you know, I, we, we, we did do it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> we got hints of what happened between Dylan and Carmen and Terrell, but we never really got the full story on that. Will we ever learn that, or, that, or are we just kind of leaving that as be, as it is? I don't think. I don't know. At the moment, I don't think there's a there's. A, but you never know. Uh, so, if, what did you want to know? We can uh, we can talk about it right now. <laughs> <laughs> when do we want to know? No, um, what, do, what, do, what do you want to know? Oh well, I mean, there were there were a hint. the only hint that I think we could gather from it was that Dylan cheated on Carmen, but we don't. It felt like there was more to it, and we couldn't really deduce anything. <laughs> Note how Steve's like, "Oh, hey, damn leaf blower again!" <laughs> what horrible yeah, where's timing. that leaf blower when I need him? <laughs> I don't um, know. I don't know if we ever talked. Did we talk about? I don't know if we got into. Specific. Yeah, it was it was left very general and vague. Um, yeah, I'm 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 guessing. No, that's yeah. <laughs> I am curious though. Speaking of Dylan and Carmen, I know we spent a lot of time talking on podcasts back when that was all happening. That it still felt like Dylan had some sort of feelings for Carmen. Did you guys ever talk about going down that route or no? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, I don't know. I mean, now that I'm thinking, you know, Dylan had, was very, got a lot of story back to back because right? because uh, Milena came in right on the heels of that. Dude. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We thought she he was still in love with Carmen, and then all of a sudden Milena happened, and we were like, <clears throat> I guess not. I don't know, but yeah, it was like right on the back of each other. Ah, I'm trying to remember what when you were thinking. Well, I mean. <laughs> I remember, you know, when we first sort of started thinking about all the Terrell and Carmen stuff, I mean, it was a little more of a, again, like often happens, a little more of a sinister story with some bad guys and good guys. And slowly on our show, everybody becomes a little more of a good guy than, you know, originally thought. I, you know, at the end of the day, when, when, when you saw that you wanted Terrell and Carmen's relationship to, <clears throat> excuse me, work out going for you, like when we wanted those two people to be happy together and, and you know, that their, their kid was so cute and, and, you know, be parents to that adorable boy and stuff. Um, I think we didn't want to feel like there was like, you know, Dylan was, you know, thinking of making a movie, you, you know, that, that, you know, I I, th I think the we felt best about Dylan where Dylan was rooting for those guys. You, you, you know what I mean? They were his yeah. oldest friends, and they had had some tough times. And Dylan, you know, felt bad about what happened in the past, but was doing his job. And again, it's you know this this struggle he has inside. Um, and so I don't know, having it work out for those guys and Dylan helping facilitate that seemed like the the best story we could tell, you know, in those circumstances. So. Yeah. And we've spent a lot of time in this back half of the season discussing Dylan and Milena's relationship. It's kind of perplexing to us because we can't really figure it out. What do you think, what, what do you think it is about each other, each other that has them so drawn to the other person? Is it because of their shared police background? Uh, well, like to Jeff's point earlier, you know, it, it's, you know, uh, 
I think from Dylan's standpoint, yeah, you know, it, it's, you know, he's a guy who's still got some in, in, internal co contradictions. He's almost like an undercover cop, you know, himself uh, in some extent. So I think he just naturally is drawn to Malena's situation as a lot of uh, empathy and concern and allows him, you know, to still, you know, to work those, those muscles, uh, you know, that are kind of, uh, that are just, that are automatic reflexes and, and, you know, and, and someone who definitely needs uh, his help, you know, is a, is a, for him a very, I think is, is attractive, uh, you know, is, is it, it helps spur a lot of emotion. And then for her, you know, who's been on the, on, you know, outside, not being able to trust anybody and just all the things that go with being an undercover cop, finding someone that she knows is a, is a, is an honorable and, and decent and good person in that world that she can communicate with and, and, and uh, trust, you know, is uh, considering how vulnerable she is, is, is pretty powerful. So. Um, I know, obviously it seems like that's going to be a big storyline next week. It seems like shit is about to really hit the fan for these two um just especially how this week's episode ended i'm curious is there anything you can tease about how that's going to go down next week it is hard to tease <laughs> anything without god i'm just I, do you I, have you thought of a way to say something <laughs> um uh Oh, I, yeah, I, I thought of one, but it feels like too much of a tease. It feels like too much of a spoiler. I was going to say, like, things collide. Stories that aren't seemingly connected collide in interesting ways. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> it's going to be, it's, it's an explosive finale. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. See, we're used to we're used to talking to Derek and like harping on every single word he says because we're like there were hints in there about something. So explosive. I'm like, wait, wait. Like, okay. Just just thinking these things through. Okay. Just just this is this is a stressful time of year for us. So <laughs> yeah. Okay. So if we switch gears over to Dr. Charles, he's had a big romance this year between him and his therapist. And it's a really interesting dynamic because it is a former therapist patient and that brings up a lot of potential conflicts. What made you want to go that route with him? I mean, uh, I oh. yeah, go ahead. Oh, well, no, I just, I like, I think it's interesting to see, you know, Dr. Charles is you know, obviously he's the psychiatrist in every relationship that he's in with patients and other cast members on the show. And for once, like, he's not the psychiatrist, you know, someone else is the psychiatrist yeah. in the relationship. And it's, you know, what could be more fun than watching the lens turned on him and, you know, seeing what it makes him feel like. And, and I don't know if you guys uh, used to watch Cheers or Frasier, I'm probably dating myself, but, you know, Frasier and his wife, uh, who is also a psychiatrist, their scenes were always my very favorite because they were both analyzing each other all the time constantly and and there's just something i find so fun and interesting about that um and and you can see you know in this last episode like charles doesn't like having the light shown on him so much it's you know it's it's not so comfortable and that's uh i don't know it's an interesting thing for him to feel i think yeah I know in this week's episode, obviously, we really saw him struggle to tell Anna about the relationship, and ultimately, he decides not to. I mean, are we going to learn in the finale why he doesn't want to tell her? Yes. Okay. You're going to learn so many things in the finale. That's finale. The, the finale is going to cover everything. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a jam-packed one is what you're saying. Yes, there's a lot of stuff. All the stories, we're not dropping any of the stories in the finale. That's... I don't think okay. we are, are we? I don't, I don't. I don't. I think. I don't know. It's all. You guys can tell us. Okay? 
Yeah. Um, of course, we can't not talk about Goodwin. Aside from the whole Vascom situation, I think one of the favorite, one of our favorite parts about the season was we finally got to meet her daughter. What made you want to finally introduce us to Tara? Oh, um, uh, well, I mean, <laughs> it's, a, you know, it, part of it is like we said earlier, it's just, you know, it's, we have, we, we tell a lot of stories, to, you know, 22 a year. And it's like, if you got something going on in your life in a relationship, it's, a, it's eventually going to come in uh, to the hospital. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, you know, it just felt like uh, at, at that moment, that was, that was the right time. Uh, and, you know, hopefully, uh, I, I, I predict that she's probably going to be uh, a big part of next season. I mean, I, uh, we always we always want to tell more personal stories about Goodwin, and it's always you know it's always a there's an extra layer of difficulty, even you know for for our for for Med like because she's not with patients as often, she's sort of upstairs right. dealing with that sort of stuff, and it's very hard to get personal with her. Whereas you know taking care of patients, you can always you know it gets a little more personal. So when we find an opportunity to let people in a little more on her life and who she is and and what she cares about and things like that i, I think that's always like sort of a, a a golden opportunity that we try to you know grab onto um because it's it's not an easy thing to do so so this seemed like a good one yeah i know i was like again you guys can't give so much away about next week but obviously a big part of the promo actually the whole promo is around tara giving birth and the fact that there might be some complications about it is there anything you can tell us about how this birth goes down no but you know pay uh, uh i'm sorry <laughs> goodwin uh it was good it's good that goodwin had a uh, history as a nurse let's just say that Okay, then. <laughs> that seems like it means it's going to be complicated. <laughs> well, yep. you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We do. We do. We do. So, and, uh, you know, with the season finale being, it'll be two days away by the time everybody's listening to this. Can you, uh, five words, tease it in five words. You already said explosive. So there's one. <laughs> and damn, there's a leaf blower does not count. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, just as a segue, as we as we think of these five words, you know, you know how we title we title uh, our episodes. You know, yes, seven yeah. for the seven. Yeah, okay. they're about yeah, to get real long next getting, year. Not that they're not already getting, that long. They're getting it's getting they're getting longer getting, and longer. Yes. You need two hands now. <laughs> two hands, yeah. We keep joking that it's going to be like eventually like the title to a Fallout Boy song where it's like two <laughs> like whole sentences. Yeah. 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 Uh, five words, uh, emotional, uh, explosive, there's two, cliffhanger, Cliff, cliffhanger, uh, divisive, mm. awesome, awesome. <laughs> all right <laughs> now that you said there's a cliffhanger it makes me nervous i mean we were already kind of anticipating it but i'm a little more nervous now yeah yeah a little so more. um last question we ask everybody when they come on just because we are we're fans of tv in general not just one chicago so what are you guys watching right now i am watching uh the staircase on uh, HBO Max, I watched the doc. It was a documentary. Mm -hmm. on, uh, I think on Sundance Channel over ten years ago, and it, it actually took place in uh, where in Durham, where Jeff uh, went to school. Uh, I wasn't involved with the I, murder. We, we we're <laughs> trying to put the dates together. You seem to have an alibi, but <laughs> see now, Jeff, if you were a character on Chicago Med, we'd be like, no, you, you might be involved, but yeah. <laughs> you're a writer, so you're good. <laughs> yeah, that, and and uh, finishing up Better Call Saul. Okay. Cool. Okay. 
watching uh watching under the banner of heaven so good it is good right it's, it's so good i i i love it it's a it's like a little slow but it doesn't like i don't get i don't get bored i i i i want to see what happens yeah um, no i i i love it i um and we're all and, and the new season of hacks we're watching that i'm working on that um, one too. i gotta get back on that yeah yeah it's a little little more road trippy this season so far mm -hmm. See, see how it played. The first season was so good. So, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm withholding my judgment. <laughs> nice. Well, guys, that's about all we've got for today. Thank you so much for yeah, joining thank us. Thank you, guys. It's always good to talk to you guys. Always good to see you. Uh, real quick, uh, Jeff, where can we find you on social media? Uh, I haven't tweeted in years, but uh, I guess we. No, we know, but still. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> but still. <clears throat> uh tv underscore md is uh, yeah, is, is that, my Twitter. That's, your, uh that's your thing yeah i haven't <laughs> geez i think maybe it's been five years since uh <laughs> since i've tweeted anything <laughs> yeah it, it's been a while and steven we try every year to get you on social media and it never works Are you, <laughs> nothing no uh, movement I, on that I, front i would i don't i don't no. tweet either but no. i do have a i do have an uh, account <laughs> Uh. <laughs> at sheetstein underscore capital o capital o did you so. just have to look that up like while we asked the question <laughs> or is it two zeros <laughs> <laughs> that's funny i did it for purpose of I, at the moment it seemed to make sense and now i can't make any sense so. <laughs> no don't good. expect anything when you go even if you, even if you find it you'll find some tweets from 10 years ago nice nice hey good for you though at some point there's sometimes when social media is like a wasteland so yeah you gotta you know, give it up yeah. good for you yeah for sure so cool well uh again guys really really good to see you really good to talk yeah, to you thank you and guys again yeah we we will we'll same time next year <laughs> all right sounds good sounds good thanks